All right, so what's good, everybody? Welcome back. So today we're going to talk about Bitcoin. I've been getting a lot of questions about Bitcoin and what is it. So basically, this video is going to be on Bitcoin and what it is. So we're going to go ahead and get started. All right, so. To understand Bitcoin and what it is, you'd have to understand that Bitcoin is a cryptocurrency and you'd have to under and, and you have to understand what a cryptocurrency is and what it means. So basically, the definition of cryptocurrency is a digital currency in which encryption techniques are used to regulate the generation of units of currency and verify transfer of funds operating independently of a central bank. That's the biggest most important part right there is the independently of a central bank all right so like i say bitcoin is a cryptocurrency uh so when i made this slide bitcoin's value was eight thousand two hundred um i'm just gonna check real quick what it is right now because i know that it's gone up so yeah it's gone up so right now at the time of me making this video bitcoin is trading at 8,610, 655. Can you see it? Yeah, it's moving, but yeah, this is Bitcoin and what it's trading at right now. So when I made the video, it was at 82, now it's at 86. So uh, just to give you a little bit more about Bitcoin, it has a total supply of 21 million. So like gold, it has a fixed supply and there's a fixed amount of it. So you can't just, you know, that's what, that's one of the things that gives it its value is that it has a fixed a fixed number of Bitcoin that can be mined. Uh, so roughly, there have been 11 million Bitcoin mined to date. Next, we're going to talk about miners. So what are miners, and why do we meet, why do we need them? Uh, so miners basically audit the system. Miners are ledgers on the system, for lack of a simpler term. Uh, so one of the things that miners do is they prevent double spending. Uh, one of the ways that I mean, that's a term that we're not really familiar with, with, uh, you know, today's society, because with fiat money, once I hand that $20 bill off and I give it to a person, I can't double spend it because I physically do not have it anymore. Uh, same thing with a check. If I write a check and I have $100 in the bank, but I write two checks to two separate people for $100 each, the first person can go to the bank and they're good. Second person is going to go to the bank and they're going to get turned away. Why? Because we have a centralized system and the bank knows that, hey, he doesn't have $100 in there, so he can't give you that $100. So to prevent double spending, miners are the auditors, basically. So what they do is they select unconfirmed transactions and put them into blocks. So miners are using high-power computers and lots of electricity to try to be the first to solve a puzzle. It's a very complex puzzle. So the first miner that... Uh, so the first miner to do so, the first miner to complete the puzzle, earns the right to publish the block on the public blockchain. That miner would then put a certain amount of data, so they'd grab unconfirmed transactions, put those unconfirmed transactions in the block, and that basically confirms those transactions permanently. The miner gets the transaction fees that you are paying, the, the miner gets that as a reward, and also for completing the puzzle, the miner is paid in Bitcoin for uh, a reward for completing the puzzle. So basically, uh, right now, uh, this is 2017, the current reward is 12.5 Bitcoin per block. Um, before 2016, it was 25 Bitcoin. But roughly every four years, the, sis the reward for that automatically goes down and it, it basically halves itself. It cuts in half and that is to kind of keep the system to regulate the system and the number of bitcoins that will be produced in mine so that um, I believe it's the year 2040 that uh, all of the bitcoins should be in existence and already mined so we won't be able to come up with more so why is bitcoin better than the current fiat that we fiat money that we use today uh, as you know paper currency is it's controlled by a government so basically the government decides when to print and when to distribute money um, gold, as you know, is what gives that current paper, that, that fiat money, gold is what gives it its value. It basically represents the gold that's in the Federal Reserve. Um, Bitcoin is similar to gold because there's a fixed supply of Bitcoin. So once it runs out, it's out, just like gold. You know, you can't pull gold out of the air. You're not going to be able to pull Bitcoin out of the air. You can't mine Bitcoin 
once the 21 million have already been mined. It's, it's just not going to be possible unless they recode it and supply more Bitcoin. Basically, like I was saying, uh, gold is what gives our current paper paper currency its value. Gold is stored in the Federal Reserve Bank because of its inconvenience, its weight. I mean, you know, could you imagine, you know, carrying around 10 gold bricks trying to, you know, trade that as value? It, it just it just wouldn't work. It's too heavy, takes up too much space, just doesn't work. So that's why the government came up with the paper currency and that's what we use to represent the gold. So Bitcoin eliminates this problem because it there's nothing to store and it can be carried by you individually and traded as currency without the need for a bank. So we wouldn't need a bank to do anything uh, involving Bitcoin. That's one of the reasons it makes it better in my opinion. So what are some of the advantages of Bitcoin? Um, one of the biggest advantages uh, that people seem to like is no third party seizure. So uh, I'm sure you know that if you get in trouble with the law or you know something like that, something of that nature, the government does have the authority to freeze your assets and freeze your money. Not with Bitcoin. The government doesn't oversee Bitcoin, so the government has no control over Bitcoin. So they cannot freeze your assets or freeze your money. No way, no how. It's not possible. Um, also, the risk of chargebacks uh, for, say, businesses. The reason this is a good, good um, method of payment for businesses is because it doesn't have any chargebacks. You can't call your bank and say, hey, you know, that charge isn't valid. I didn't get my product, so I want to dispute this charge. And the bank give the customer their money back. The only way to transfer Bitcoin is from one Bitcoin owner to transfer it to another Bitcoin owner. You can't charge it back. just not possible. Um, also, no personal information is needed. So to transfer Bitcoins from me to you, all you would need is a wallet address. Just give me your wallet address. I can send the Bitcoin like that, matter of minutes. Um, with you know cards and credit cards and things like that today, you have to put in your card number. You have to put in your cards on the back. You have to put in your name, address, all of these kind of things. And it just it takes up time, one, and that's a lot of information that you're putting out. Whereas with Bitcoin, it's just a wallet address which has no it doesn't tie back to you. It, it only ties back to the wallet, which people can't see. So very, very uh, big advantage there uh, to Bitcoin. Also, the very low transaction fee. So this is mainly a factor when you're talking about spending, sending large, large, large amounts of money and sending it internationally. That's where it kind of becomes a sticky situation. It becomes, uh, you know, you have to go through different exchange rates and things of that nature to get different currencies to different uh, countries. But with Bitcoin, you can just send it. You know, it's, it's not a, a, like I say, there's not a bank that it has to go to convert it. Do, do, you just send the Bitcoin, that person gets the Bitcoin, they do what they want with it. Just that simple. Uh, so the transaction fees, like I say, are much lower because there's not as many people involved and not as many hands touching the money before it gets to where it's going to. Uh, also, the ease and convenience of sending Bitcoin. Bitcoin is traded 24 hours a day. So... It doesn't matter if it's Christmas Day, it doesn't matter if it's New Year's Day, it doesn't matter if I'm sending $10 or $10 million, I can send the Bitcoin and it's going to go. I mean, what what matters or what affects how quickly the Bitcoin goes is the transaction fees. A lot of platforms will give you the option to change the transaction fees and you can literally put in to have a transfer, a Bitcoin transfer for zero transaction fee. You don't want to pay anything. It's going to be very hard to get that transaction or to get that transaction confirmed because a miner doesn't have incentive to grab your transaction and put it in a block so sometimes you'll see uh, that you have low medium and high and oftentimes I go with the high just to get it done at ASAP so you know I don't want my Bitcoin just kind of sitting out in space I, I'd rather just go ahead give the miner some incentive to grab my transaction put it in the block because again that transaction fee goes to the miner so if you're not paying a transaction fee the miner is, is going to sit there for a while and possibly never get confirmed because a miner is not going to be, you know, anxious to grab your block that doesn't pay a thing when there are lots of other blocks and lots of other transactions where people are paying and, you know, offering him money to put that transaction in a block. So definitely something to think about when you're, uh, you know, transferring Bitcoin. <clears throat> so how do you earn money from Bitcoin? Well, there are uh, four main ways that people earn money from Bitcoin. One of them, the most popular, is trading it. Just like a stock on the stock market, people buy low and sell high. And Bitcoin's market is so volatile. It's so up and down on a daily basis. It's possible to make a lot of money. Obviously, the more money you have into it, the more you're going to make with the smaller changes. But 
like I say, I made this slide yesterday, two days ago. It was 8,200. I mean, within the last few days, it's been as low as 5,500, 5,500 within the last week. And right now it's at 8,600. So you can see the volatility right there. I mean, you know, buy low, sell high is the premise on anything. And Bitcoin is no different. Uh, also mining. So we talked about mining earlier. So you can... <clears throat> So with mining, you can purchase mining contracts. Uh, there's a company, the most popular is Genesis Mining. You can purchase a contract with Genesis Mining to purchase some of their computer power, which is, I mean, they sell it by the terahash. So you can purchase one, two terahashes, and that will basically give you how much ever that terahash mines, the Bitcoin that it mines, you will get Bitcoin from it. Um, I'm, I personally don't mine. Uh, so I'm not 100% sure of, you know, the 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 benefits and exactly I'm not I'm not exactly sure of the payouts, but I do know that it does pay out. It's very popular and lots of people do pay for mining. Uh, so it's very expensive to buy your own mining rig and to, you know, do your own thing. So lots of people join pools and mining pools and just split the commissions uh, from from doing it that way. But it is a very competitive market mining Bitcoin, because as you can imagine, like I say, it's $8,600 a Bitcoin right now. The reward is 12.5 per block. That's a lot of money. So as I'm sure you can imagine, it's a very competitive market. <clears throat> so the next way to make money from Bitcoin is a lending platform. Uh, so the I, I actually do do a lending platform. I'm a part of BitConnect and I actually have a BitConnect video before this one. So uh, I had a lot of questions on what is Bitcoin, which prompted me to do this video. Uh, but basically a lending Lending platform is a platform that allows you to lend the Bitcoin to, say, a trading bot for a predetermined amount of days, and that bot pays you a percentage of daily interest that it makes while it's trading. Uh, so obviously, days that we have, or days that Bitcoin is very volatile, you know, if Bitcoin opens up at 8,200, closes at 8,300, that's not a very volatile day. So the bot, in essence, the bot wasn't able to make a lot of money, so you, you won't get paid a lot of interest on that day because the bot didn't gain a lot of money on that day is basically the premise behind it. So on days where, this, where, on days where the market is not very volatile, you don't get much uh, interest payment, but days where it goes from 5,500 to 7,000, you could see 1% to 2%. It just depends on you know what platform you're a part of and you know how you've invested your money there are different platforms again i'm involved with bitconnect i i've done don't, don't have anything negative to say about it i mean i'm gaining interest daily i've been in it for about two weeks and i've made about 210 220 something like that on it uh, i started with a thousand dollars and now i'm up to like 12 12 or 12 20. so i can't complain uh love it next we're gonna go to staking uh so staking is very similar to a security deposit, um, but instead of your interest being paid in dollars, in money, your or in U.S. dollars, your interest is going to be paid in Bitcoin. Um, so you're basically locking up your Bitcoin. You're holding your Bitcoin. It's staking. You're staking your Bitcoin with the company for um, a predetermined amount of time. So three months, six months, twelve months. Those are the most popular options. Uh, but you stake your Bitcoin for that long. <clears throat> Um, you basically you can't sell the Bitcoin during that time. But one of the reasons that staking is very popular is because that during that staking time, you're gaining interest on that uh, that money daily. So the, the platform, whoever you use to stake the money will pay you interest on your money daily. And also at the end of that staking period, if that uh, Bitcoin or if that you know coin has accrued in value, you will also get the uh, you know the difference or you know it, it's worth more now. So definitely that's a popular option. I can definitely see why. Uh, I haven't started staking, but I'm definitely looking into it. So right now the options that I'm using are trading and lending. Uh, definitely looking into staking and I might look into mining a little bit later, but uh, I kind of want to take it one at a time and you know learn learn the ins and outs and everything that I can about each one as I go instead of just jumping into all of them at the same time. All right, so the last one I have is what gives Bitcoin its value? And the answer is very simple. I mean, it's we do. Supply and demand is what gives Bitcoin its value. You know, um, the the need for a, a something different. I mean, uh, say when I transfer, if I was to transfer a million dollars to China, 
that money would have to go through U.S. It'd have to go through China, through the Chinese authorities, you know, banks, transfer systems, things like that. It'd have to get converted into yen, just different things like that. It, it's a very strenuous, long process. Lots of different fees. Lots of different hands are going to touch the money. With Bitcoin, it's not like that. I can go on my wallet and send $10 or $10 million from here to Europe, to China, to you know Asia, Australia, wherever, anywhere in the world. I can send the money. All that person needs is internet access. All I need is internet access, and we can have the money sent. So it's just more of a easier form of currency. Uh, uh, revolutionary cryptocurrency i mean the blockchain technology is something that's you know it's proven to be very strong proven to be very trustworthy uh i'm a big fan of bitcoin i have money in bitcoin i am gaining interest through bitcoin or i'm gaining interest through bitconnect daily and uh like i say i'm a firm believer if you guys have any questions or comments anything you'd like to know more about anything you want me to do a video about Leave it in the comment section and I'll be happy to oblige. So thanks again. You guys have a great one. All right, signing out.